So you want to climb up the ranks in teamfight tactics? Well, this is how you do it. In today's video, I want to go over six of the most common beginner mistakes or players that are playing in bronze, silver, gold, platinum, etc. that make these kinds of mistakes that affect their game and ultimately cause them to lose too early or take too much damage. These things are not the most basic, so if you're looking for basic tips, I have other videos for that, but this is gonna go into beginner mistakes and how to correct them. The first beginner mistake that I see all the time is gonna be picking a team comp too soon or too early into the game. The problem is that players look at these final team comps, these seven, eight, or nine size teams that work really well together, they have great synergies, and with the right items, they can dominate the game. But what they don't realize is the game is built all the way up until late game. You have early game comps, you have mid game comps, and you have late game comps, and you also have transitional comps and units that are really good at getting you to that late game stage. So if you're picking a comp in the beginning of the game, you're probably gonna run into a situation where you can't complete it, you don't have enough money, or things just don't work out in your favor, or maybe you don't even have the items for that comp, because as we all know, compositions and teamfight tactics are built by items, not by units. So here's a general rule of thumb to help you know when you should picking a comp. I like to look for my final game comp by the time I hit around wolves. Anything before wolves is usually just a mid game comp or a stop gap to see if you can make it through mid game without losing too much HP. But around wolves is when the time that people will start picking their compositions for late game based on the units they've been able to get to two and three star, the items they've been collecting throughout the game and what makes sense based on what is available to them. So if you're picking your team comp before Krugs, or you know, before you even get to the second carousel, you're likely gonna lose the game because your whole momentum built up to late game is a constant reassessment of what you have and what you can make and what the best option for it is. The second beginner mistake that I see all the time is people re-rolling at the wrong time or re-rolling too often. Now we will give this guidance that you want to play the way the lobby is playing. If all the seven other players are playing aggressive and re-rolling, you also have to do the same. You cannot play econ when everyone else is re-rolling and vice versa. If you're playing aggressive and re-rolling when everyone else is running economy, you're going to lose the game because those just don't match, right? If you're running economy, you're not collecting enough units, you're going to fall behind and lose too much HP and probably die before you even make it to late game. But here's a good rule of thumb for re-rolling. In general, you want to have a goal in mind. If you're re-rolling and you don't have a goal in your mind, you should not be re-rolling at all. This is specifically like, I have a Cho'Gath 1. I want to get Cho'Gath to two stars and I'm at level six or seven or higher where I'm very likely to get four costs like Cho'Gath. And so I'm going to be re-rolling using the economy I have, knowing I'm sacrificing my money so that I can get that Cho'Gath to two star. This is a great example of a goal you have in mind. If you're just blindly re-rolling, you're going to waste a lot of money. You're not going to have the income that you need to get to late game and pull the game out of your hat and you'll get stuck. Generally, if you get to Raptors and you don't have your late game build, most players around Raptors will be going all in. And what this means is if you don't have your late game build close or you don't even have an idea of what your late game build is going to be because it just hasn't come together yet. If you're passing Raptors, you probably want to go ahead and take the 40 or 50 gold that you have and just reroll all that and roll down and see what you can pick up. Because a lot of times, if you're going past Raptors and getting to Dragon and you don't have a late game comp, you're in late game at this point and you need to find a build or you're just going to get eliminated. The number three mistake that I see from beginners in this game a lot is building the wrong items or building items at the wrong time. Now, items, like I said earlier, and I will always preach this, items are what makes teamfight tactics builds work. If you're running gunslingers and you don't have gunslinger items, it's going to fail. If you're running shapeshifters and you don't have shapeshifter items, it's going to fail. If you're running sorcerers, you get the idea. You have to find the right items that work for the builds you're running. And oftentimes, if you know what you're doing, I would recommend seeing your items and building a composition off of that. 
If you're getting a lot of Giant's Belts, you don't want to run Hyper Carries because you're not going to get the Rage Blades, the Rapid Fire Cannons, the Bloodthirsters, the things that make the Hyper Carries work. If you're going to run Rangers, you want to have a lot of Static Shivs and Shoujins for the Ash to make it work. If you don't have those items, you're going to have to think of something else. And so, building the wrong items, there's a couple items in the game that are generally just not good to pick. I would actually put Ionic Spark in that role right now. It can be good against certain comps, but it's starting to fall off a lot. But there are some items that just aren't worth picking up. And there's also items that generally are based on a, a specific area of the game. Static Shiv is really good early on. If you get Ionic Spark really good early on, it can do a lot of damage. But late in the game, they don't do as much. The flip side of that is if you get Morella Namacon at the very beginning of the game, that won't have the same level of impact because Morella Namacon is great if you're using on people like Kennen, Garen, anyone that has a large AoE, Cho'Gath, Karthus, these kinds. And the team fight needs to last long enough for A, you to get your ultimate off, and B, for that Morello Namacon to actually take effect. And so if you're building Morello Namacon with three units or four units on the board, it's not going to have the same impact as another item. The number four mistake that I see a lot, and this is probably actually worth an entire video on its own, I'll put that on my list, but it's not playing what the game gives you. I want to tell you right now that you need to get it out of your head that you are in control of what composition you build. It's not true, especially when you get to the high levels, you are building what the game is giving you. This combines items based on what drops and also what you're able to roll. If you want to run knights, but you're not being given any knights, you don't want to spend 60 gold re-rolling trying to find this knight build when either the knights are being taken by other players or you're just not finding them. You're just unlucky and the roll's not there. So a lot of times what will happen, and this happens to me if I feel like, you know, I'm hitting a point where I need to all in and I'm, I'm doing what's, what I like to call rolling down, which is just rolling until you find something, is you roll and you find units that are valuable, units that are, are high value to your team, and you just keep buying them until you can find one that gets to two star or three star, and then you start coalescing a composition around that. What the game is giving you is what you should be building. There are times where I start out with a really great Nobles or Gunslinger build, and then all of a sudden the game just gives me six Shivanas out of nowhere. And so what I need to do after that is say, okay, cool, I just got close to a three-star Shivana. Let me see if I can run Shapeshifter Yordle or Wild Shapeshifter or something with the Shivana and build items around that because guess what? The game is giving me a lot of duplicates of this unit, and so I'm going to play off that. I'll see if I can make a video separate from this because this is actually a whole other topic entirely, but it's very important that you're paying attention to what the game is giving you. The number five mistake I see beginners make all the time is running units that bring low value. The units you put on your board, you want to have a high value output. This means that their ultimate gets off or they live long enough to impact the team fight or they fit into a synergy that you're trying to build. I see a lot of players run units that either aren't very good, units like Elise right now is kind of crappy, Twisted Fate doesn't really do a whole lot. These units don't bring a lot to the board, and if you spend a lot of money investing in them or putting in them in your team comp, you're just gonna be down, right? In a lot of cases, if you run like a Twisted Fate versus a different unit that's not even in your synergy, it may be beneficial just to run that other unit. Like if I see a Twisted Fate or a Poppy and I'm running Sorcerers, as long as I have three Sorcerers, I might just run the Poppy because the Twisted Fate doesn't bring a whole lot to the team fight. And the last mistake of the six that I see a lot of players run into, and this is something that you'll learn over time as you get better at the game, but not constantly assessing your team's strengths and weaknesses. This again, this requires a lot of experience, but this is something that I want you guys to be working on as you're playing the game. But think about what you need, right? Sure, you may have a composition in mind than your one or two units off of, but watch every time your team fights another team and see what you surmise from it. It might be that, holy crap, I have a lot of damage, but I don't have any front line that's up there defending it. And so my damage dealing characters are just dying too fast or they're being exposed and they can't be trapped. So you want to see if you can get some front line in there. Even if it means that you just grab a tanky unit like a Braum or a Leona or a Cho'Gath or something, even if it doesn't fit your composition, it's still fitting the need of I need frontline right now. Conversely, say you have a very like four knights, two guardians, you have this really tanky team and it takes a while for you to lose, but you still lose every time. 
you might be missing damage. And so you want to see if you can add damage into your composition, even if it doesn't fit with synergy. Throwing in an extra assassin or finding a Draven or putting a Rengar in there, even if it doesn't fit what you're going for, might be enough to get you over the edge and prevent you from losing HP until your full composition comes online. And that's it for these six beginner mistakes that I see all the time watching streams and talking to players and playing on multiple accounts. These, if you're able to master these and really work these into your play, will make a huge difference in your ability to climb the rank charts and get better at teamfight tactics. And I really appreciate you guys being here and stopping by. Please, if you made it this far, check out my Instagram, follow me on Twitter, you know, subscribe, comment, all the yada yada yadas. Check me out on Twitch as well. I stream about four or five days a week now, and I will see you in the next one.